This is a short video on introduction to GPS. I took this from one of my colleagues at Colorado State University, Alicia Kral. Um, so GPS stands for Global Positioning System. It's really a misnomer when we say we're out with a GPS or picked up my GPS. Uh, the proper term would be GPS handheld because uh, GPS is the system. It's the whole system. We'll talk about that. And they're there to determine your position in typically geographic coordinates, but also other spatial references. <clears throat> GPS uses a network of 24 satellites. Now this is the original um, US GPS system that um, the military put up and then it was made commercial during the 90s so that anyone could use it. In fact, now there's uh, multiple GPS networks uh, that most GPSs can access and we expect this to just continue to improve in the future. So the way a GPS works is um, the satellites are always putting out a signal all the time. They send out a signal with a uh, time signature on it, very accurate time signature. Your receiver then has a clock in it as well. And because uh, radio waves move at the speed of light, um, your GPS can look at the difference between its clock and when the satellite sent out a signal and convert that to a distance. Now the problem is if you only have one satellite, that's going to tell you, oh, we're this far from a satellite, but that could be anywhere in a circle around that satellite, so it doesn't give us a point yet. Uh, with two satellites, then we'd have two circles, but that would mean that our GPS could be here or here, so it wouldn't know an exact point yet for any kind of point. Uh, with three satellites, now we can find the intersection of three circles, which gives us a unique point. This is why your GPS won't work with less than three satellites. And nowadays we can often get up to 20 satellites. The more satellites, the higher accuracy your uh, coordinates are going to be. So there's really two different uses for a GPS handheld. Um, one is where am I? We use that a lot, taking waypoints for invasive species is what I've done quite a bit of work with, but also streams, trails, um, all kinds of things. Uh, GPS can be used to collect spatial data and then bring that into a GIS system for future further analysis or map making. Uh, also, we tend to do how to get from point X to point Y. I don't do this as much, but some folks do, where it's like, well, I want to go to that point over there. So you can put that into your GPS and it will give you an arrow to give you a direction to go from where you are to where your desired point is. Now, you do have to be moving for the compass inside a GPS to work to give you a direction. Okay, and that's because it doesn't really have a compass. It's just looking at the last couple of points to figure out the direction the GPS is moving. Um, when we do use this for mapping, we can get points or polylines. Okay, now the point is gonna be a waypoint inside most GPSs. The lines are going to be uh, tracks, um, and there's different versions of tracks, but usually you'll see tracks. Polygons usually aren't done by a standard recreational grade GPS, but you can do a track and then just connect the last dot and, that, and convert it to a polygon that way. Um, points, again, would be individual points, campgrounds, plots, trees, lines would be trails, rivers, and then polygons for lakes, or I've done a lot of walking around patches of weeds to record where they are. 